this is what happens by the blood of the Lamb. There ain't no other way. All these lies, all these things that's been happening, is under one power. And that's the enemy. And the darkness of every night, the darkness even of day, and those that have been blinded by the God of this world. And not see the truth, the lives will take it. So, you can put the scripture up on the screen, please. And we're going to come together. We're going to say it together. Is it okay? We're going to read from the New King James. Amen. I just got that one scripture to share, and then we're going to have a few testimonies up here tonight. That's what we're going to do. Why? Because we're going to give God glory because we overcome. Let's say it together. And they overcame. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm going to share my delivery with her, um, with you folks. So it was totally, it's totally different. You know, with Levi and Lily, I was, you know, everything is pretty much planned. We knew when we were going to go in. We knew when we were going to deliver. With her, I had no idea. The day we all said that we was going to go in together, she just, she was just not ready to come out. She didn't want to come out at all. She was, I was like, you are so stubborn. I was like telling her, come on, you need to get out. Because I normally don't go towards my duty. I usually deliver early because of my history. But she took it all the way to the end, this girl. And um, <laughs> I was so funny because leading to that, I was getting excited to return back to church because we we're coming back here on the 31st of May. And so I was like, okay, girlfriend, you need to stay in there until after church. But she had her own plans because 4 o'clock in the morning on May 31st, my water bag broke at home. And so I woke up, my husband said, hey, babe, my, what, my, I think my bag broke, so we need to get going. And he's like, huh? So we packed up the kids, dropped them off at my parents, went to the hospital. And this was all new for me because now all the, the pain with the contractions was coming in. And normally I'm already at the hospital by the time I bank break. So the anesthesiologist is there, ready to administer the meds, the epidural. But this time I had to wait. And I was like sweating in pain. But finally he came and he started to do the epidural. And he was having a hard time doing it. It took him a lot longer. And I was like, are you okay back there? And he's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to get it in the right spot. And do you feel this? I'm like, yes, yeah, on my right side only. So it took him a while, but he got it. Thank you, Jesus. But from that point on, everything was just, it was just going crazy. In, in about 15, 20 minutes after the medicine was was put into my spine, I started to get sick. I started to get dizzy, I started to get nauseous, I started throwing out, and I was like, what's going on? Because I never ever get sick. I never ever have any type of reaction to um, anesthesia. So I started to get sick, and when I started throwing out, everything started going crazy. My blood pressure started going up. I started to shake. And one of the nurses thought I was having a seizure because I was literally shaking off the bed. And they were reading my blood pressure, and then the last thing I know, they, my blood pressure shot up to 191 over 120. And, that, and they were about, my husband was telling me, I, by then my eyes was closed, I had no idea what was going on, but my husband said it was a crazy scene. About five, six nurses rushed in, and they were trying to flip me, they were trying to, one was, I, I could hear, one was yelling at me, and she was, Janine, Janine, listen, Janine, Janine, open your eyes. And, I, and in my mind, I'm like, yes, I'm here, but I couldn't respond. I started to become unresponsive. And the last, after that, I passed out. Then I woke up. By the time I woke up, uh, my husband was there. I had a couple nurses, and they were like, hey, welcome back, you okay? And I was like, what happened? And they're like, you're not sure what happened, but you know, your blood pressure went up, so we had to we had to get you under control, so we started flipping you all over the place, and I was like, okay, so after that, they started to really watch me. Every couple of hours, from then on, every couple of hours, I started to get sick. So I started to ask, I said, what's wrong? How come I'm getting sick? And they, they, they kept telling me, we're not sure. Well, while all of this was going on, we are waiting for myself to get ready to deliver. I needed to dilate. I wasn't dilating. My cervix was pretty much stuck at seven centimeters. And I was like, what is going on? And, you know, we're praying for my body to, you know, prepare it, prepare the way for, for me to deliver baby, but it wasn't happening. And I got to the point almost 12 hours later, 
the doctor is like, okay, you're still stuck at seven centimeters. We're gonna have to, and you're like at the highest dosage of medication. And throughout that whole time, you know, you're on the medicine, so you don't feel like anything. But my contractions was like pretty much every minute. I had a contraction every minute. We were watching the monitor. And because of that, it was putting stress on the baby. So they kept coming in, they kept flipping me. I was doing, I even had to hold this big ball between my legs and like move this way and this way because her heartbeat was dropping and she kept moving and they couldn't, they couldn't control the situation. So they told me, we gotta take you off of the medication. But by taking you off, it's not gonna help you dilate more. So you're gonna have to hope that your body can do it naturally. If not, we're gonna have to emergency C-section. I got scared when he said that because I've never had a C-section before. All my babies were delivered naturally. So immediately we were praying. I was texting Pastor Bobby and she was like, okay, we're gonna pray. Your body is gonna come into order. I'll alert the intercessory team. And and um, ex then she texted me back later. She said, everybody's alerted, expect signs and wonders. I said, okay, I received that in Jesus' name. Half an hour later, doctor came in, nothing changed, so we had to go in and do an emergency C-section. I was scared because I was like, oh my gosh, I've never, this is a major surgery, that's why. I was like, okay, but one of the things that I was scared about was that I'm already getting nauseous and sick with this medicine. I told the doctor, so what's gonna happen when you, you administer more medicine? He's like, oh, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. And I was like, okay, because I'm kind of nauseous still yet. He's like, okay, I'll give you medicine for that. And then before we go in, I said, okay. So he came, he gave me the nausea medicine and it worked. It took away my nausea. My nausea. I was like, okay, I'm good, I'm going in. My husband's being prepped. We're getting ready to go into the operating room. So we go in there, I transfer, they're hooking me up. So now C-section, you cannot, they don't want you to move. So the nurses come in, they strap me down to the bed. And then the anesthesiologist is like, how are you feeling? I'm like, oh, okay, I'm feeling okay. And he's like, okay, I'm gonna just administer the medicine so we can numb you from here, from your bottom down, from your mid down, to the down. And I was like, okay. As soon as he did that within seconds, I could literally feel it going through my body. And when I felt it, I started to get dizzy. I started to get dizzy, I started to get hot, I started to get sick. And so I turned over and I'm looking at them and I'm like, I'm gonna get, I'm sick, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna throw up. And they're like, oh, okay. And I was like, no, I'm gonna throw up. And then I started, you know, I started to throw up because the nurse came with the, with the bowl and she put him under and she looked at the anesthesia and she's like, oh, she's getting sick. He's like, oh, okay, okay. So they grabbed the suction and they're taking it out. But now I started to feel more warm and then I started to feel drowsy. And then, before you know it, I started to have a really hard time breathing. And so when all of that started happening, I started to freak out. I was like, oh my gosh, what's happening? And I looked up at the doctor, and your arms are strapped. So I'm looking, and I'm like praying, somebody look at me, somebody look at me. I'm having a hard time breathe. And the doctor, he finally looked at me, and I was like, I could, I could, now my mouth, I could hardly move it. I was like, I, I'm trying to, him and cannot breathe. And he was like, huh? So he grabbed the oxygen mask. The whole time that was going on, I was just, I was so scared because my worst fear, I, you know, going into that room, I already was scared that something was going to happen. And now I'm lying on the bed, cannot move, and I'm having a hard time breathing. I mean, I couldn't even breathe. It was literally like, like I had no, you couldn't breathe. And I was freaking out and in my mind, I, I was scared and I was praying and crying out to the Lord and saying, Lord, help me breathe, what's happening? And I'm freaking out. And the doctors are, now the doctor is, cause my eyes closed, he's flapping me on my, my head. Janine, Janine, are you there, are you there? And the nurse is holding my hand and she's like, Janine, squeeze my hand, I need to know that you're there. And I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. And the whole time I was freaking out I couldn't breathe. I was calling out, calling out to the Lord, and nothing. I got so scared. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it changed for me. I felt warm. I felt 
it felt different. I felt at peace because at the time, I, t I just I accepted what was going on. I thought I was going to die. So I, instead of me crying out to the Lord, help me to breathe, I told him, Lord, I love you. I love you. Forgive me for everything that I've done, everything that I've said. I love you. If I can ask for one more thing, just one more thing, help me to hang out just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer, please. I don't know how long that went, because all I kept saying in my mind was, I love you, Lord. You. And I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. And the last thing I remember was my daughter crying. I heard her crying, and that was it. I blacked out. It, all I can say was scared. I was scared. I really, I told my husband I really thought I was going to die. I woke up four and a half hours later. Four and a half hours later, I woke up, and I was like, the doctor seen me, he said, Jean, welcome back. And I was like, what happened? And he was like, right now we're just gonna, we're glad that you're up. We just want you to know your baby is good. She's beautiful, she's with her daddy. They're in the room waiting for you, but we're gonna prep you. We're gonna un unplug everything and take you over to recover room and we're gonna talk to you about what happened. And I was like, okay. So we went to the recovery room and what happened was, Last thing you remember, I so said the last thing I remember was my daughter crying. So that's how about the time I see. And I, he said, You stopped breathing, but I caught it. I caught it the second I seen you stopped breathing. And I shoved that to the dog. And I was like, Thank you. And I said, God, thank you. Because if you wasn't paying attention and you was looking around anywhere else, I don't know what. He said, Yeah, we knew something was going on. We were quite, we were. Your levels was going up, everything, something was going on, so we knew that I never kept my eye off of you. And I thank God that he did it. Right, immediately he brought me back to Pastor Bobby's text where she said, expect signs and wonders. That was my signs and wonders. The people who was in that room with me were all handpicked by God to be in that room with me. That was my signs and wonders. So I just want to, you know, that is my testimony what happened and I'm so blessed to be here, a blessing, a blessing, a blessing for my daughter, my family, my husband, a blessing to be alive. Yeah. 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 And I know what Pastor, when Pastor Robert talks about, be thankful for that very breath you breathe. Be thankful for that breath you breathe. Yeah. I know I am because I was grasping for it. I know how it feels to grasp for it. So I'm blessed and I'm thankful. And I'm thankful to be here to share that with all of you. And I love you guys. I'm happy to be alive and to be in this house. You deserve it all. You deserve all the honor. You deserve all the honor. Thank you. I love you. I bless you guys. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful testimony and powerful. That's the life given. Now, we're going to have hope you enjoyed that. We're going to have Sister Mark come on. Show it's a powerful time to give God glory. And we know you all have a testimony, so only a few people pick tonight. But we're really here to give God some glory.
I was diving in the water and um, I blacked out. And I was like, but my friend was there and he got me in time for grabbed me out of the water. And of course you hear stories about what happens in the water and everything from predators to the elements, even to this. And, you know, I thought about Uncle Rob, the sun. In my heart, I was like, I wish I was there to just comfort him and love him. But I knew God was there because he placed that person to be next to Brendan Amen. during that time. And to hear Brendan say, thank you, Lord, and thank you, God, and thank you, Jesus, to me, and that I was Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, that it was instilled in him to give him the glory and to honor him and to be thankful for his life. Yes. I mean, it, it, it's something that we can't take for granted. And like how Sister Jean said, that breath, I mean, once you black out, I mean, where else can you, what else can you? It's not like you're going to go back up, but it's, I mean, as a parent, as a mother, I just wanted to be there to wrap my arms around him, to just love him and hug him and kiss him, but I knew God was there to embrace him, to love him, and to say that I'm here for you. And I'm just thankful that he could acknowledge that. And I'm just thankful for the word that went on him because Psalm 91, 4 was, I don't even know what it was, it's something to remember. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Mm -hmm. And it may be in his military life, but it's part of his life too, yes. as his hobby that he was still covered. And I'm just thankful for God being there when I can't be there. Mm -hmm. Uncle Russ said, nothing is more powerful than a mother's love. But it is because it's God's love is more powerful than a mother's love. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to be, but I can just say, Lord, please, thank you, Lord, for your continued hand of protection over Brendan, for guiding him and protecting him. And I just hope he continues to seek you, Lord. And that's all I can do as a parent, as a mother. I can't force him because he's at that age where he's enjoying everything. And I just have to let him go. I just have to be at peace upon that because I know God still covers over him and guide him. And I hope and I pray that he still continues to seek him. Amen. So I'm just thankful for what God has done. And I'm thankful that he knows and he has a relationship with him. And I just want everybody to be aware that you always go and have a buddy when you go out in the water, no matter where you are. You Amen. can even let somebody know where you are so you know. Somebody's thinking of you, and somebody's going to pray for you, and somebody's loving onto you, and somebody's going to be waiting for you. So I just want to thank God, and Psalm 91 is a covering because at the ending of the um, scripture, at the ending of the scripture, it's it's still even better yet. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I'm just excited because uh, God is just Amen. So Psalm 91, verse 16 says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. And I will protect him from that knowledge, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. And I will deliver him and honor him with long life, and I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So I know he has a plan for Brendan. I know he has something greater for him. And I know he's going to guide him and protect him. So I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just thank you, Lord. Thank you. God is good. We have one more. Y'all good? God is good. This defiant to God's goodness brings forth his glory. It gives him all the praise. Amen. And we know that others have testimony, but I want to tell you what. This is why you have to testify when something happens. And God gives you that opportunity or that open door. So we'd like to call for somebody to relieve Brother Joseph, please. And we can bring him down. Pastor Al is going up. Thank you, Pastor Al. Appreciate it. We know that Brother Joseph has shared, but it's important that we hear the goodness of God. Sometimes we forget we get caught up with everything that's happening. 
you know, it gets, we just get caught up and we allow our environment to kind of guideline us and control us. There's too much out there to confuse us. One thing you can count on is God's Word. It's yes. absolutely unchangeable, will never pass away, will always accomplish the day. will always accomplish its purpose. It will never come back void. No matter what you do or what you believe, trust in God, believe in Him. Brother Joseph, please. So we're blessed. We're blessed to have you tuned in. We're blessed to have you in the house tonight. This is about the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. In Jesus' name. Such a blessing and honor to share the testimony I got. I'm so excited. Um, I got a text asking if I was willing to share a testimony. Amen. Which one? <laughs> I should have asked Wayne. Because, but I got another text. And I was like, oh, whew, now I'm nervous. <coughs> okay, but um, I, yeah, I got a couple minutes, so I got a little timer. Um, I'll keep me in track. Um, so. Yeah, we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimonies, which shall not live our lives until the death. Um, I, I love that scripture. I love this scripture. It put me out of so much. Um, church family can come and agree with a few things. Uh, first of all, the enemy is main purpose to steal, kill, and destroy, and come against everything God has for us. Um, we can also agree that God can take any situation and use it for his purpose, no matter what it looks like. Just wanted to set that up. So, uh, the testimony I'm about to share is about my work area. Um, I started a new job about a year and a half ago, and um, you know, I'm, I'm, it's a new, it's a new profession for me. So I'm, I'm learning it, but I'm 40 years old, learning a new job that I've never done. So, um, everyone likes working with me. They say I work hard. I try my best to learn. Show up, show up early, stay late. Uh, they just love working with me. That's what I get from everybody that I work with. Um, a few months ago, we have a new boss. He came down from Oahu. And he, he, he talks down to me. He belittles me. He, um, he just, just the way, and I have a history, I have a history of succumbing to those that treat me like that with painful so like if someone's talking to me I have a, a flinch reaction and they're going to get slapped <laughs> or, or punched or something that's my flinch reaction I have lost multiple jobs because of this but when I got this job my wife said this is the last job you're getting you cannot lose another job like this and I was like tell me Jesus <laughs> I love to work. I work best alone, the way it is. That's why I did good running my own business. I work good with others as long as they agree with me. <laughs> but being a 40-year-old apprentice, I gotta submit and humble myself to work underneath people that might not have as much experience or might not want to do things my way because they're set in their ways and they're trying to teach me something. I'll do my best to learn it. My um, Every month I have an evaluation. Every month the evaluation says pretty much the same thing. But my journeyman that I work with turn in a report every month to my foreman and he writes up a report based on those, those reports. My new boss observes me and writes his own report and they're completely contradicting. So every day I work, try as hard as I can. I go home. I mean, my boss would tell me, you're not doing this right, not doing this right, not doing this right, you can do this better, blah, blah, blah. And I'm getting frustrated. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's happening again. I don't want to get mad. And, and, um, and, um, hit this guy or say something I'm not supposed to and lose another job. I, I did have a meeting. I did have a meeting and it was brought up. And I also started praying for me. And then what I, what I, and I, and he, so Apostle didn't only pray for me, he also paid for my job and he paid for my boss. And, and I could tell the difference immediately the next day. But also the next day I went back to work, this was like two weeks ago, and I started to reflect on me. Well, how can I change me? 
Because what I've come to realize is that consequences and atmosphere is 10% of what's going on and 90% of how you react to what's going on. And so I started, I don't know, um, I don't want to say anything PC, but I'm asked or told to do something, to say yes and do it. Yes and do it, but he saw it, he saw it, he saw it. And no matter what, no matter what he was asking me to do, like, it was pretty bad stuff he was asking me to do, and I was doing it. He said, okay, got it, got it. Okay, this is what you want, okay, this is what you want, this is what you want, okay. And he said, well, be before that, before that, rewind a couple days before that, I finally had enough, and my little whistle, my pressure cooker went blow. <laughs> I would bite my tongue about 10 seconds too late. But I went on. I started ripping them. And then I'd catch myself. And then I started like, oh my God. So I went walk away and I walked to right to my public office and said, this is what happened, I don't know. Contact my union, like, hey, this is what happened, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I I might have stepped over a couple boundaries. And um then I decided, you know, that that was like two weeks ago on Wednesday. And I said, I gotta change, I know I gotta change because I kinda of been doing this. Someone that loves to work kind of be mad at work. And it affects my family life too. And I know I know that he was, you know, the enemy can use anybody at any time, I believe, for try and take people off, I guess. And he knows what buttons to push and what to say and what we're doing. He knows he knows my weaknesses. And um this person, as soon as I, went, I started yelling at him, as soon as I started yelling at him, he said, I knew it. You're not a good person. I just had to get it out of you. Boy, oh, now he kicked me off. Because <laughs> I tried so hard to change my life and do good and, you know, and every time I get home, I come and I'm like, hey, he's he pissing me off just going to work. I'm already dirty going to work. I can hear his voice. I hear, I hear his voice in my head. I was trapped something. So, I know I was already getting to a bad place, and um, as soon as he said that, I knew it was kind of like, kind of like the enemy said, got you. And I was so mad at myself for, for giving in to that. And, but, but, the awesome thing is that I'm gonna apologize for that. I had a meeting, got written up for it. I had a meeting with the union, got written up for it. Yes, I understand, okay. But then I still came to work and I still tried my hardest to prove to him that I'm a, I'm a good person and I just made a mistake. And then finally, last week, he had a meeting with him again. Uh, we have multiple meetings because I'm still on the ground. He, um, He, he shared with me that he wishes, now this is someone that for the past six months been telling me that he doesn't like the way I work. He wish I could do better. He wish, you know, he needs, I need to step up my, I need to step up, step it up. He told me that he wish, he wants me to train, we have a new guy. He wants me to train a new guy to work as hard as I do. He wants me to teach the new guy my work ethic and my work habits. And just from his tone of voice, voice alone, I could tell that whatever was bothering him and hindering him to bother me had left. Because, yeah, amen, because the tone of voice is different, the speech pattern is different, the way he presented himself is different, the whole atmosphere is different, and I was like, wow. And a lot of it was, a lot of it was because of, um, I changed my attitude, I changed my attitude and my willingness to do everything, and that's one of the things he said. He said, one thing he noticed about me was that no matter what he asked me to do, I never complained, never whined about it, I just said yes and did it. And he did it, and he, re and, and he said he kept asking me to do all the junky jobs that nobody wants to do, and he already auto automatically expects someone to complain about. I was like, oh, you got it, you want it, you want it, you want it this way, okay, I'll do it this way. Want me to do it over? Okay, I'll do it over. You want to do my way? Do it again, my way. I'll do it three times. And he said, he wants me to, 
he said, you guy work at the, which is kind of funny because I was driving my dad home the other day and I shared that with him and he laughed and he goes, you know how long it took me to teach you work at the? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, I guess that. So um, that's, that's basically all I have to share is that enemy try to um, use what hinders me and, and um, gets on my nerves to get me to, to succumb to that and quit another job. And, and um, everyone, everyone at work knows that I'm a, a Christian. You see me praying for food or they go out and eat for a company meal to have rest of food. But at the same time, they're also waiting to see what I do in situ certain situations. And uh, two jobs ago, I was already saved and already coming to this church and I had failed one test. You know, the same thing, they saw me praying for my food and everything and I, I failed that test. And so now, as my wife said, it's the last time. And the enemy pretty much got denied to an impenetrable wall. And during praise and worship two weeks ago, I got um, I heard this clear word from the Lord. I've been trying to suppress my anger, trying to suppress my anger ever since I've been saved because I know that's my weakness. I try not to yell when we get yelling competitions. I try not to participate because that, that triggers me for anger. I, um, I, try, I, don't, I try not to swear. Even just talking swear words will get me angry. So I try to stay from swearing to yelling. I'm trying to suppress my anger, to suppress my anger. During my meeting with Apostle Kapu, I shared him a word that I got and, and he he said don't suppress my anger because the word that I got during praise and worship two weeks ago on a Wednesday night was use your angry energy for my purpose and I got scared and I started crying right there because I have a lot of angry energy that I've been trying to suppress for a lot of years I don't even know what's gonna become of it. I haven't, I haven't even, I'm still, I'm not, I haven't even tapped into it yet because I know what kind of damage I've done with anger. Now I'm kind of excited to see what kind of good I can do with the energy that I get from anger. I've had great workouts, I've had great football games, I've had great soccer games, I've had great wrestling matches out of anger. Now I just wanna, I'm kind of excited to see what I'm gonna do for the Lord using some angry energy. So you guys see me jumping up and screaming one day. I say praise the Lord. That's if I need anything, but that's what I have to share. Amen. I was blessed because I understand what Brother Joseph is saying. Um, what he shared in the office with me, what God told him, is something I, I learned many years ago from my own life is I try to suppress feelings, uh, whether they be anger or any kind of feelings. And the wife said, you never suppress it, you harness it. When you harness it, you can use it. Like a sail in the wind, the wind of the sail. It can give you energy to move forward to its purpose. So thank God for each and every one of you, Sister Jim and Sister Mar, Brother Joseph. I thank God for each and every one in the house tonight. What a blessed night. Just listen to some testimony. Just see what God has done with you. around us that is trying to mislead us. Jesus can lead you in the way of that perfect light. Light up that path for you. So if that's you, just think about it a moment and let's pray together. And just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Forgive me my sins. I receive you today. And I thank you, Lord. I bless you, God, for sending your son to die for me. I know he's seated at your right hand. I receive you today, Jesus, and I know my life will never be the same again. 
God bless you. We pray that Amen. prayer. Give us a call. Email us, whatever it is. Send us a prayer request. We're here for you. Pick up that phone. Give us a call at the office. We'll pray for you that way. Share with us your experience of what God has done in your life. If you're in the community, don't have a church, stop in. We're open. We take care of everything. Everything is safe and sound in here. And we love the Lord. The Holy Spirit will minister to you. If God touches you to give an offering into good ground, over 22 outreaches, all you got to do is you're watching on YouTube, go to the website, wordofthruthmaui.org. It'll take you to the site. Press the green button. That will give you the availability to sow good seed to redeem a harvest. God bless you. Have an awesome evening. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord for the house. Amen. amen.